like a little hat. But what I don't want you to do is this. Let's say here's your, your primary ball here. What I don't want you to do, and what would be natural, like if you were to actually take two balls and compress them over top of each other, what would happen is the surface of the ball would actually envelop the first ball so that it would go right over top of the ball like this and then it would ring around this way. Okay, it would create an ellipse that goes all the way around. So it's like taking a toque on your hat and you pull it over top of your head and it simply rings your entire head. It looks odd though when you do that. Okay, the problem here is that what we want to do is we want to create another optical illusion because the bottom ball is going up. Okay, so the force is going in this direction. And so therefore what we want to do is we want to create a sense that the ball on top is being compressed and pulled this way in the center, but it's being pulled down on the sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to draw it as a jelly bean, like this. Right? So the center point here is being pushed up by my finger right now. <laughs> It has the illusion that it's being pushed up by my finger, but the two sides down here are being pulled down in this direction on either side. So we've got this force here and on the two sides to create an illusion that it's being pulled. So it's going like this. So now on drawing number eight, as the ball stretches up, we're going to continue with that compression, maybe just lessen the amount on the top. You can see how little I've got right there. I'm going to lessen or make it a greater space there. Still having the pull. Like that. So you can see the difference between the two drawings. Now in number 9, 10, 11, this is where the ball recovers back to its original state. And so what we're going to do is we're now going to recover the second ball as well up. back to pretty much a circle, a little bit of a stretch to it, still a little bit flat right here. Now I'm drawing number 11, it hasn't quite reached its high point, it's still going up, so I'm going to continue to pull this ball here up, so it's going to go back to a circle state now, but it's separating away. It's still touching, but it's just pulling up and away. And so now we go back to our number one drawing. And here's where I can follow through with the action. So my action on this is that it's squished, it's recovering, it's going up. And so what I want to do here now is I want to start to stretch it. I want to keep that top ball still going up while the bottom ball has stopped. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a stretch here. So I've got this type of a, a movement here. Just a little bit of a stretch like that. Then I'm going to go to number two. And here's where my ball starts to drop, the bottom ball drops. But what I'm going to do with the top ball is I'm going to let it stick. It's like I'm going to put a little push pin up at the top here and let it hang on. So the illusion that I'm creating here is somewhat similar to the Wile E. Coyote Roadrunner cartoons. Okay, remember when Wile E. Coyote goes out on the edge of the cliff and then he goes beep, beyond beep. out into space and then he suddenly hovers there, frozen in space, defying gravity. Then he realizes, uh-oh, I'm standing in midair, 
and then the different parts of his body cascade down. First his feet go, then his hips go, then his chest goes, and he's left with just his head and holding on to the sign, and then zip, out goes his head, and the sign is just sort of flittering around, and then it drops out of it as well. So we're creating that illusion that with his body, if this is his hips, his hips are going whoop like this, but his head stays stuck in that top position. So we're holding it up there. So that's what we're doing with the ball now, is we're leaving it stuck up in the top point here. Right. And that'll create more of a drag and delay. So now we can continue that, going into number three here, we can put a drag on this as well, and start to have it drop down, but just a little bit. Okay, just a tiny little bit from the top there. And now we're into number four, and so we have to go back to number five, or grab number five, because we need it for reference to in between it properly, so that we don't mess up our position. So between these two drawings here, we now have to do a pure in between to make sure that they match up. So we have to find our halfway point between the two tops, which is there and there. We find our halfway point right there. You could stretch that out just a little bit above the point just to create more of a drag on it. Okay. So now when we put them all in order, The amount that you choose to drag that will create more of an overlap. But as I mentioned, you go with something that you know as an absolute. If something is moving at a very fast speed or uh, uh, its highest speed that it's ever going to go, then you know definitely whatever is trailing behind is going to be pulled and stretched. So that's the drawing that you would start off with. So if we had started off with drawing number one, how many people would have guessed that's the position that the ball would have been in? I've done this lots of times, but I still wouldn't have guessed because I changed it on this one slightly from previous years that that's not exactly the same thing that I've done before. I did something slightly different based on what happened previously. Right? So you can manipulate it and change it in different ways to cause it to do different things. And what I'll do is when I finish up uh, the lecture here, I'll shoot the pencil test and uh, I'll dump it onto the video and then I'll do a bunch of different variations of it to show you different timings and different ways that it can react. Having it stretch more or stretch less, deform less, you know, compress less over it. Each one will be slightly different. I'll do about three or four different ones. 
just so you can see how they look. All right. So this is our first new step into animation, a new area of animation where we're starting to deal with a new principle which is the overlapping action. And it's basically, the, the definition for that as I mentioned before, is that not everything happens at the same time. We don't want our animation to look like a big chunk of wood where it's all stiff. We want to create the illusion that something is overlapping. And that happens in every part of our body as well. If you were to move your arm across from this position here, to this position here. If you keep it stiff, it looks stiff, right? But if I do this, okay, it creates more of a fluid movement, okay? And that happens in everyday life. We do it in everything with our arms, our legs, our body, our spine. That's why our spine is segmented in order to help us to do that type of an action so that we're not stiff and rigid, right? So we're going to try and apply that to all of our animation as we go through uh, each different principle. So next week what we're going to do is we're going to add a tail onto the back end of this and have it drag. It's another form of overlapping action.